one of the most anticipated androgen receptor antagonists, clascaterone, have been finally given green light to proceed with the phase 3 clinical trials, which have already started last month in June. The data behind this compound promises an efficacy similar to that of finasteride, but without any of the side effects. So, how good is it really in combating and treating androgenetic alopecia, and how soon should we expect it available on the market? Now, luckily, we do know a few things about Closcaterone. First thing is, it's being developed by an Italian company called Cosmo Pharmaceutical. This company previously named the compound CB0301, which is the name I assume a lot of you guys are familiar with, but then changed that name into Closcaterone, which used previously to create another product designed for people with acne. And that product actually got the FDA approval in 2020, and it's called Wenlevi, I think, is the commercial name for that particular product. But in that product, there is the same active ingredient, which is now in the product designed for androgenetic alopecia patients, which is Closcaterone. So the company do know what it's doing, and it already got the FDA approval for the same molecule, but designed for another category of patients. So that's a good thing. The second thing we know about Closcaterone for androgenetic alopecia is that it already went through phase 2 clinical trials successfully. And it was actually so successful that a lot of people was surprised that the company didn't proceed with the phase 3 clinical trials immediately. But in the newest report they said that it's likely because of COVID that things got halted so much. So we're gonna get into the phase 3 clinical trials designed and started already by the company. But first let me give you a brief idea about the efficacy found in the phase 2 clinical trial for Closcaterone on androgenetic alopecia patients. So the phase two clinical trials included 400 men. They were divided into four groups. Each group received a different dose of Closcaterone. The first group received 2.5%, the second group received 5%, the third group received 7.5%, and the fourth group received 7.5% applied twice a day as opposed to once a day in the third group. The results were given to us 12 months after the initiation of the phase 2 clinical trials and uh, the first thing that we notice is that this drug is dose dependent because the group that got the most and the highest dose of Closcaterone, which is the fourth group of 7.5% applied twice a day is the group that benefited and had the most amount of hair growth in the four groups of the trial. The average improvement in target area hair count compared to placebo group was 10.2 hairs in the 2.5 solution group, 13.8 hairs in the 5% solution group, 14.3 hairs in the 7.5 solution group, and 12.7 hairs in the 7.5 solution group applied once a day. So as you see, the fourth group that received the most and the highest dose of Closcaterone, which is 7.5% twice a day, is the group that benefited from the highest improvement in target area hair loss, which is 14.3 hairs after 12 months of applying Closcaterone, which is a really good number. It's like we can even compare it to that number of finasteride or with the number of pyrolutamide after only six months. So pyrolutamide still has the superiority based on the clinical data we have so far, but there's a second good point about Crosscaterone and that is regarding the side effects. As the company claimed that this topical antiandrogen that is similar to finasteride it did not show any hormonal or sexual related side effects during its testing. It claimed that it had zero side effects related to the systemic absorption of the drug. And also, as far as I know, and I've read the report by the company, zero side effects that are related to the topical administration of the drug, which even pyrolutamide got some percentage of patients, which is 2%, I think, of the patients that applied pyrolutamide in its phase 3 clinical trial got some pruritus, which is linked to the topical administration of pyrolutamide. But in this case, in the case of Closcaterone, the company claimed in its report announcing the phase 2 clinical trials back in 2018, I think, that there were no side effects whatsoever, not side effects linked to the systemic absorption of the drug, so sexual side effects 
or not any side effects associated with the topical administration of the drug. And if you're wondering what's the exact mechanism of proscaterone for stopping androgenetic alopecia, it does not interfere with the dihydrotestosterone production just like finasteride does. Finasteride is a blocker of the 5-AR enzyme, the one that is responsible for converting testosterone into its more active form, the more potent androgen, dihydrotestosterone, which is the one that binds to the hair follicle and destroys it. So, cluscaterone works with a slightly different mechanism of action. It's more similar maybe to pyrolutamide than to finasteride. Cluscaterone is an antagonist of the androgen receptor. It competitively binds to the androgen receptor and it blocks those androgen receptors so that DHT, when it comes to the hair follicle, it will not find any binding site. So, it will not theoretically and practically, as we see in the clinical trial, find any way to exert its effects, its damaging effects on the hair follicle. So as you see, really amazing, fantastic results that were announced again in 2018. So you may be asking now, why didn't the company immediately proceed with the phase three clinical trials? And a lot of hair loss sufferers and enthusiasts of this field, me included, were shocked to know that uh, this Italian company did not immediately proceed with the phase three clinical trials and we were waiting until we lost hope, almost. But uh, a new report from the company came out and they announced that they already started on the 18th of June, the phase three clinical trial, which is named SCALP-1 and it will include 726 participants and also will involve four treatment groups, just like Closcaterone phase 2 clinical trial for androgenetic alopecia included four treatment groups. And they said that a six month phase 3 multi center prospective randomized double blinded vehicle controlled study will evaluate the efficacy and safety of the topically applied Closcaterone solution for the treatment of androgenetic alopecia in males, followed by another six months single-blinded treatment study for closcaterone or a vehicle solution. So this second study that will be included in the phase three clinical trial will be single-blinded, meaning only the patient will not know the information about whether he is in the treatment group or in the vehicle group, but both the doctors or the analysts will know that information. But this again, after a six month study that is double-blinded, and one more thing that I wanted to mention about this study, and I think it's worth mentioning, is a little bit of a conflict of interest. And that is Cassiopeia SPA is the one listed as a sponsor for this trial. However, we already know that it was recently re-merged into Cosmo Pharmaceutical, the owner of Closcaterone. And when it comes to the second question about how soon should we expect this product to be available in the market if everything went well with the phase three clinical trial, the estimated completion date of the trial was January 2025. So if everything went well and if everything went perfectly with the data, we could expect Closcaterone to be dropped into the market on 2025, at the end of 2025 or 2026. This is in the best case scenario. So a lot of waiting we have to do guys, a lot of patience we have to hold into until we wait and we receive this product. And another thing that I wanted to mention in this video is the two strength points Closcaterone has. And they are pretty similar to that of pyrolutamide that I talked about in my video on pyrolutamide, which you can go watch after watching this one. The first thing is Closcaterone does not cause any sexual side effect, at least from the data we got from the phase two clinical trials. So that's the first thing. So those uh, category of patients or group of patients that are feared to use finasteride because of sexual side effects or maybe they use finasteride or dutasteride or any 5-AR inhibitor and they quit using it because they experienced sexual side effects. This can provide an alternative safer option in that regard. And the second strength point about closcaterone is the fact that it works with a different mechanism than already FDA approved finasteride, so there is the possibility to use it as an adjunct treatment. So this category of patient that is using finasteride currently and they do not experience any sexual side effects from finasteride can add 
plus Galeron in their arsenal to fight hair loss, which will yield together a better result. I did mention in this video that we have a lot of waiting to do until we get cross Calderon in the market. But another product that will be dropped before cross Calderon is pyrolurmite. So again, you can go watch my video on pyrolurmite where I'll talk into details about one, the strength points of pyrolurmite, two, the efficacy and side effects experienced by the patients in the phase 3 clinical trials of pyrolurmite and 3 the estimated release period or date of pyrolurmite. You can find all of these information in my video on pyrolurmite and if you enjoyed the video don't forget to press that like button also subscribe if you haven't yet and as always stay safe.